Hello, everyone. We're back uh, doing another uh, Off the Shelf. We're, we haven't done an Elmo in a long while. It's been about a year, I think. It's been a, a little hot less minute. than a year. Well, technically, that's because we finished a long Elmo series. Yeah, yeah. And then we were waiting for enough stuff to be published from another one to, to kind of start it as semi, semi-regular. semi And well, we did other I fate wanna... stuff in the meantime. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. just... I was just commenting that it's been a minute. Um, but yeah, there we're, we're doing the sequel series for Elmoloy, The Adventures of Lord Elmoloy. Um, right off the bat, I think this one really toned... Like, there there was no mystery to this one at all, so... I mean, there, there was some interesting stuff, though. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. I'm sure there was some interesting stuff, you know, yeah. One Piece fan. <laughs> uh, nope, not even because of One Piece. Not even because of One Piece. So, God, how how do you do this? Do you? I could I could summarize everything that happens. I guess right off the bat, this is this one's different than the previous series. Then it takes place after Fate Stay Night as opposed to before. Uh, so, it changes the characters that are able to appear here. Like, it's not a spoiler to say like within the first like chapter or two Rin gets introduced as a main character of this story yeah yeah and she is just a pirate now yeah yeah well technically she's not a pirate per se she's an information broker who works for pirates she's a pirate we, pirate Rin is canon <laughs> <laughs> drink up me hearties yo-ho um i'm i'm gonna be real here you know you know what two fucking names jump scared me in this volume which ones heinrich schleiman and zhang he because like like all last semester obviously i like we our recording schedule was weird and so was the publishing schedule and that's because i was working on my undergraduate thesis because I had to do one for my history degree. And part of my undergrad thesis came along with reading a shit ton of Heinrich Schleiman's works and basically dissecting every single aspect of how he did archaeology and tearing it apart as the sort of error-filled misadventure that it was and then proposing all the ways that like we we need to like go back over that stuff and and reanalyze and recontextualize and then Zhang He for me is just a personal interest like I think he's maybe one of my favorite historical figures because I just think the stories of Zhang He and his treasure fleet are fascinating like I think they're some of the most interesting historical like travel logs and like travel stories I've ever read so like man i got jump scared with like my most favoritist historical character and like schleiman <laughs> but yeah i guess just... and the straits of malacca what a great setting it, it's definitely a change from our normal elmoloy fair normally we're dealing with like european britain kind of area like, i don't think elmoloy has really ventured out of that setting in the previous series no but do you know what i love about it it feels mm. like a not not exactly indiana jones but it feels like an indiana jones right like it feels like the mummy the 1999 cinematic masterpiece with brendan fraser and rachel weiss <laughs> It feels like that. It feels like the librarian movies. It feels like the librarian series. Like it feels like this sort of like, ed, like cross the globe adventure in search of ancient treasures. And you know I love me those. Yeah. Um... It really felt like the librarians, like especially. <laughs> You know, like a, an overly smart shut-in professor taking his students or, you know, the, the 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 younger version of what he is around the world searching after these ancient artifacts and rumors. And there's more to the rumors than they seem and there are other groups after them. Yeah, I guess as far as other groups go, besides the, 
the the the, the pirates uh who it, it was hilarious that the pirates are there and they're all just kind of doing their best i love that the reveal about the pirates is that these are not pirates this is just a group of underprivileged kids that rin has decided are now hers <laughs> yeah. like rin as best aunt i'm not gonna say mother but like aunt <laughs> for certain <laughs> I love it. Also, Rin as figuring out how to enchant speedboats because they couldn't do what she wanted them to do fast enough. I love that, like, <laughs> there are multiple points where Elmo is just like, you know I could report you for this, right? Uh-huh. And he's just like, oh, I'm driving this, but what did you do with, like, the wind resistance? It's just a little magical circle. It's okay. This isn't, this isn't Europe. No one cares. <laughs> <laughs> they're all super sisters here anyways i i actually love that response because in europe like magic and stuff like that come with a much higher sort of caveat of disbelief but also a lot more suspicion and that's because of this christian reformation legacy witch trials things like that and how much europe tends to look down upon pagan and and kind of other belief systems and schemes whereas in asia and east asia in specific there is still even though the region is christian buddhist islamic you know and so on there's still a lot of entrenched local belief practice and like magic in these cultures that has been allowed to survive so it makes sense that that's her explanation for it and i love that but we also get a taste in the series that like that that European clock tower brand like it, it's not the only magic organization within this world like you got to see a lot more uh, people involved with the Atlas Academy here yeah we or, got to see Atlas the, Institute we got and then to you see got the to people see, uh, from the Atlas Institute low key call the clock tower colonizers yeah. it was great <laughs> and then you also had the uh, who was it that there I don't remember it's been it's it's been a minute there yeah. was that other the the other like the the, the local um not the mansion institute. the manor yeah 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 um which i actually did not know about going into this volume and i okay yeah. did they they straight up i don't know if this was in the original translation i kind of hope it was did they make platform nine and three quarters a thing in tight moon as well pretty much yeah <laughs> yeah and i love that for them like that is glorious this this entire book just warms the cockles of my little archaeologist heart. <laughs> it just makes me feel so happy. Um, you know what? In a lot of ways, it kind of felt like the the recent Uncharted movie, especially with the ship at the end. I do think, unlike something like that, though, the ship really wasn't the focus throughout no, most of it. But it was there, and it was fun. Yeah. I do love it at the end, though. I guess jumping really far ahead here, Rin, uh, Rin's on that ship and it's sinking She's again. Like, no, <laughs> my treasure. <laughs> I mean, also kind of jumping around and in terms of what we're talking about, um, you can really tell that that this this version of Elmaloy is kind of older and more more settled. Like he's he's basically planning on on stopping lecturing at the clock tower. He's retiring, Seki. Yeah, because his department is sufficient without him, and focusing on helping Gray. And I really love his interactions with, I forget the kid's name. Ergo. Ergo. Yeah, I like his interactions with Ergo, because it's it's so interesting to see him in almost a fatherly mentor role there, where is kind of responses but is that what you want like here's how to make what you're doing the best that it can be if it's not what you want why are you doing it like i will back you up and that was really nice to see mm -hmm. i thought it was very cute it's just interesting that of all the tight moon characters we are probably probably Elmoloy is the one we follow for the longest, like, expanse of time within his life, I think. Oh, yeah, because we get him from, like, 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 a high school age. Oh, he's supposed to be, like, 
18 there, but let's be honest here, he looks like a freshman out of high school. He looks zero. like he's 12. <laughs> so, like, high school age to, like, I would say comfortably middle age. Like, this man's probably in his 30s, right? At this point? It was 10 years from... Okay, I'd have to take a look at his starting age in Fate Zero, but it was at least... He was he was, he was in Volt in Fate Zero. Uh, 10 years or so to go to Fate Stay Night, and this takes place a solid year or two after fate stay night so he's about it's been about 12 years 10 to 12 years since the so 30s early yeah. 30s but 30s still dirty dirty at bare minimum what an accomplished man i love him more and more the more of these i read he's talking about retirement in his 30s god hashtag life goals yeah. <laughs> that will never be me as an archaeologist i will never get that option <laughs> Never be you as a professor in general. Professors do not have it that nice. No, I will retire at like 97. <laughs> and I will be cantankerous till the end. I will become known in the department wherever I teach. <laughs> so the reason he's trying to help Gray in this story is because, and this is a little tidbit that was dropped here. After Artoria got summoned um, in Fate Stay Night and at the same time as the final book of Elmaloy, she just kind of gets Artoria's dragon core in her. Yeah. And just has not aged a bit. Yeah, and he wants to make it so that she can age. So he's looking for a cure and he's willing to retire from the clock tower in order to more fully pursue that. Mm -hmm. Which, aww! Precious babies! Yeah. I love this. And I, I also love that they're... The, and this has been maintained throughout all of their interactions. There is no romance between Almaloy and Grey. And I love that. This is like purely a mentor-student relationship. Like at the most, close friends. Mm -hmm. And I love it. Keep it that way. I think it. there is a little bit of um, the anime pushes the idea, a, like tries to push the idea a little bit. But I don't think it works there. No, I didn't they, even catch it. it it's only in the it's really only at the end of the real Zeppelin arc in the anime. I don't remember that being the case in what in any of the volumes I've read of the novels. So even then it wasn't that strong in the in the anime, and I, I really like that. Keep this, keep this as mentor and student. Being I fair, need he's also much younger than him. If he did go after her, that'd be very much cradle robbing. That's true. I need mature single El Malloy. This for many is reasons. the only person he needs. Yeah. <laughs> also, it's it's really nice to hear because so one of the things that they talk about is when he gets to the Strait of Malacca, they talk about his nickname amongst mages, and they give like a really good explanation as to why that's his nickname. Cause, cause, what is it again? It's like, oh, I don't remember, but it's like it has to do with the fact that he like it's because of his detective work from the first series where he just goes in and he's like, "This is what you're doing. This is how it works. You're, I'm getting the, the I'm getting people are going to be coming for you now because you're breaking many rules." No, it's more than that. He has a name like uh, like thief or something, and it, it's because specifically he has such an amazing ability to analyze other people's magic determine how they're doing it and then make it his own and improve it and so it's like high key thievery in some way but like intellectual thievery this man out here breaking copyright law <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, I thought that was really interesting and it was nice to get like a full explanation of it it was interesting so the very start of the book they don't immediately tell you whose perspective you're reading from um so no. it was interesting to get like the slow reveal at the beginning there that it was gray that was a it was a gray again obviously she is the the most common narrator in this yeah it, it was an interesting choice i don't know that i agreed with it very much because it did make the beginning a little bit confusing but it was I, cool to get that other perspective on el Malloy too yeah i mean i've had that commentary on some of the books before too you know, like the perspectives can be a little wonky in terms of keeping track of who's talking when and sort of what's being revealed. I think this book outside of the outside of that little beginning where it's like, who are, whose perspective is this? Who you don't know. Um, 
this book kept it consistent to gray outside of like little aside things they did uh once in a while and it's like, that were very clear. lighter story yeah yeah whereas in the previous books like midway through the book you can jump from like gray to rightness to uh like one of his other students and you're like can we not jump between perspectives of uh, different chapters please yeah anyways i appreciate it i thought this book was fucking great yeah i i, I like it. i'm I'm glad to read something that for once takes place later in the timeline. Instead of earlier. Yeah. Well, so we'll, we're reading this by arc again, obviously. So it might be a while before, or is the next arc already? Oh, yeah. Let me take a look at that, but it's going to be a minute. I just want, I got this one now because one arc, it, it was a one book arc. Um, we did have a little bit of coaching. Yeah, I think they're still working. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a minute. The person's uh, still on uh, the second book, and the next arc's two books, so. Okay. okay, so it'll be a while before we get back to this. Yeah. I, I think that's all I want to say about it. Yeah, I I don't think I have much else to say. I mean, it's, let's be honest here, it's Elmo Loy Book 11. They just separated out the time. It's just a time skip. I'm okay with that, though. But, like, th th this does try to call itself a volume one again, which, if you're a Fate Stay Night fan and didn't read the Elmoy case files, you might be like, oh, I'll just follow the timeline to the next one. No, you kind of need to read case files before this. It's mature Meloy, and I like that. <laughs> More mature, obviously. So this is the part where you go back and reread or watch Fate Zero? I keep promising to do that. You're busy. You have other stuff that I need you to do, too. Uh, ironically, I do actually have a lot of free time right now, so I really should do some. I, I'm starting some of the other stuff you want me to do, but I probably should think about getting to it in the next couple of months. Look, if you ever want to just fire up the camera, I've seen that series enough times and know about the differences in the books to be like, <laughs> But that's, I'm not pushing you on this one. Oh, I did get it. Yeah, because I do have a couple of the volumes of the manga. Yeah. The yeah. manga is different, by the way. The manga, I, from what I understand, the manga of Fate Zero's entire sell, I mean, not selling point, but the thing that people remember it for is that some of that art gets really hyper violent. Yeah, I could tell. I could tell. <laughs> like, excessively so. I've got volumes four and five right in the middle, so I get it. I get it. But yeah, I guess. Well, we'll see you next time with something. Something else. Don't know what yet, but it'll happen. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs>